Live from the Pepper J Production Studios in Hollywood, California, it's time for Actors E Chat Show. Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific Time. Now, with nearly 1,400 entertainment celebrity guests and over 6 million viewers worldwide, every Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific Time. A co production of Pepper J Productions and Live Video Inc., a Kurt Kelly company. It's the Actors E Chat Show. Hi, and welcome to Actors E Chat. I'm your host today, Pepper J. Today is going to be an interesting episode of Actors E because our guests, plural, are really an it. Yes, an it, a fun. It's called the Horror Equity Fund, and it's going to be interesting to speak to these two guests because, one, they have done just about everything in this business. All right, they've been in theater, they've been in films, they've been in production, one's been screenwriting, the, I mean, you name it, the other's an entrepreneur that has made really millions of dollars for lots and lots of companies. And together, they've put together this horror equity fund. Let's first meet its founder, Marlon Shulam. Shulman! Yay! Shulman! I, I've been called worse. Good morning. I've known you for years, <laughs> and I said your name wrong. How cute is that? Hi. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm the CEO and founder of Hara Equity Fund, and uh, along with Brian Herskowitz, we are uh, trying to change the paradigm of how to fund independent Hara-centric projects. Interesting. Interesting. And let's start with telling people a little bit why you, what you do, because... I think on first blush, people think, oh, Kickstarter, Indiegogo, they raise money for things. But what you do is very different. Very fundamentally different, although it arises from the same roots. Uh, it really is different um, by way of explanation. Uh, back in 2012, as you know, the Jobs Act was passed by a bipartisan um, Congress. And although various uh, uh, offshoots of that arose, uh, the securities laws changed drastically, allowing general solicitation over the internet and allowing Kickstarter, Indiegogo, things that you know of. But those are all rewards-based or donation-based. They really come down to um, pre-orders. You give $50 and you get a poster. You get a download of a film. You get a, um, a new app. Um, but there's no way of profiting from that person who gave that money uh, if that company blows up in a good way. Um, particularly something that comes to mind is uh, the Oculus. There's a, a 3D headset that people gave about $340 or so, and they got a headset and a, and a first-person shooting game. Uh, that, after a couple of incarnations, uh, sold for over $2 billion to Facebook. Nobody profited but the people who owned the company. So just so I understand, the people that contributed money got their T-shirt. Well, they, they got, got their hat. They, they got, got whatever their reward was, but they didn't get a piece of the action at all. No, and under various sections of the securities law. Um, and what am I looking at here? Oh, that, that happens. To, <laughs> it's on our website, horrorequityfund.com. Uh, that's the Oculus headset that was sold originally for $348. And then uh, eventually, after a, a second round, sold to Facebook for $2.1 billion. Okay, so let's just back up one moment, please. What does an Oculus headset do? Well, this is going to be the briefest answer because I'm okay. not here to talk about somebody right, else's right, product. Right, right, I understand. But um, I it's a 3D immersion headset. You put the headset on, and you're inside an artificial environment, and you're able to move around and see things in 3D. So I have to say this, okay? I've known Marlon for a long time. And it's like sitting next to an encyclopedia, an entertainment encyclopedia, a filmmaking encyclopedia. I don't care, <laughs> I don't care what the subject is. He either knows it, he knows enough about it to know where to find it, and he is like an encyclopedia. Well, it's thank you. I, I won't necessarily agree with all that, <laughs> but, but thank you anyway. Um, the, the radical difference, the, there's a number of radical differences Please. between Kickstarters, Indiegogo, things of that nature, which are rewards-based or donation-based, which have their place. And what we do, which is uh, investment-oriented uh, projects. When someone gives money to 
a film that's a project, a horror project that's being presented on our website, uh, which is totally SEC compliant, they get a piece of that film. So if that film, if they give X number of dollars and that film goes through the roof, as horror films very often do, they will participate in the largesse, the profit of it. And to make sure about that, any project that goes onto our website um, gets a production account and put on there by us to make sure that the stereotypic Hollywood And there's your website we're looking at right That's now. That's the head site. That's the right. horrorequityfund.com. It's an interesting place. You ought to go there and check it out and really kind of take a look around. Not only do you learn stuff, but there are lots of interesting opportunities there. It's, it's, we're very happy with it. If you, scroll, if, if, if you were to scroll down on that, yes. um, I should tell you that's only a demo site. It's, um, it's not operational right now. Oh, I see. There's a tremendous amount of information about what we're doing, though. Yes, there I are, saw there, that. There are morning. tombstones, infographics, um, uh, statements. Uh, there's, there's some now, so what are we looking at here for the tombstone? Well, we have Invite the Wolf. Uh, if, you, if you like me, I can actually come over and talk to you. Uh, there's a deal flow <laughs> chart, there's an, in, there's an info video, and what's bracketed over there is the Wolf Bites, which is uh, the blog. Your blog, And yes. we'd like you to register and get information. And there's the Wolf Bites right there. Yeah, that was a radio interview we did, and right after this, this will show up on the Wolf on, I on, love on it. the Bites. Actors Eat Chat will be on Wolf Bites, everybody. Beautiful, beautiful. And um, th there's a tremendous amount, there's some very nice infographics, there's uh, e e real explanations of how issuers, i.e. filmmakers, right. can raise money for their films. And there's a, um, a nice question and answer that goes on um, explaining almost everything that need, you need to know. It seems very user-friendly for anybody that was interested in raising money for a script that they might have, a horror script. Uh, let me ask you, speaking of scripts, you receive a lot of submissions. Well, we, we haven't officially started to ask the public for scripts. Right. And you're absolutely right. We're getting dozens and dozens of scripts. That Hands are, over that are, fist. Yeah. And so you have really a lot to choose from. What type of things do you look for for people out there in cable world that were thinking, oh, I have a horror script that I'd like to submit to them? Well, he, he, here's the, the concept, and I'm going to leave a lot of this to Brian. For, uh, for the next segment. That's Byron Hershkowitz. Uh, Brian Hershkowitz. Yeah. Um, what we do is we, we have an interesting uh, uh, way of looking at things. We look for the best script that we can find and we try not to mess around with it too much. We're not producers. We describe ourselves as a mechanism for the development and funding of horror-centric projects. Um, when we take a script and we think it's good enough, we take it to our uh, uh, distributors, sales agents, and we allow them to reverse engineer the script. In other words, they'll say, this is a terrific script, but it needs more blood, or it needs less blood, it needs more graphic violence, it needs a, a Chinese girl, because I want to distribute it in China. Right. And we'll request the scriptwriter to make those changes. Interesting. It's, it's up to them to do it. But once they do make those changes, in exchange what we get is a LOI, a letter of intent, to distribute it. We get attachments to it even before the film has raised money, uh, or, or shot, of course. Right. We then take it to a, what we call the monster room, and this is all on the website. Right. The monster room are, are, is half's horror equity funds. Right. Private equity people, uh, funds, acquisition companies, co-production companies that we're aware of. And we ask them if they want to contribute money, if they want to take it outright, if they want to fund it. And uh, we've been successful so far in, in, in a couple of different films. Um, and after that, uh, depending on what happens, if they fund it, we're off to the races, we make the fun. We make the film, rather. Uh, if, we, if they want 50% of it, etc., right. we then go to the crowd. And we work with lawyers and with them and here's an, an essential difference uh, from every crowdfunding, crowd investing company in the world. We conduct the uh, campaign to raise the money. Why should a producer, a screenwriter, an actor who brings us a script, they don't know how to do this. This right. is not their job. It's our job. You guys pay us for it, right. but at a much lesser rate than it would normally cost. 
and we raise the money through also an associated website called the Federation of Horror. And we're going to learn more about that. And, and when we come back, you're watching Actors Eat Chat. I'm your host, Pepper J. We'll be right back after word from one of our sponsors. Over her long career, Nina Fosh appeared in classic films such as Spartacus, The Ten Commandments, and An American in Paris. She received an Academy Award nomination for her performance in Robert Wise's Executive Suite. In 1965, Nina Fosh arrived here at USC to begin teaching directing, and I was lucky enough to get into one of her first classes. Even as she continued acting in film and television, Nina's passion for teaching lasted for over 40 years. Her course was immensely popular because she developed her own unique style, drawing on her experiences studying with Lee Strasberg, Stella Adler, and Uta Hagen, and being directed by such icons as Vincent Minnelli, Stanley Kubrick, Cecil B. DeMille, and Otto Preminger. As I began directing, the tremendous value of her teachings became evident and how important it was to preserve them for future generations. We became close friends and at a cinema department event we ran into my former classmate George Lucas who invited us up to Skywalker Ranch where we discussed creating a DVD of her course. He agreed to finance it and on January 10th, 2002, we began taping an entire semester using a crew of USC film students. We filmed for eight hours a week for 15 weeks, and this is the result. Okay, so what are we gonna do this semester? Hi, I'm Pepper J. Welcome back to Actors Eat Chat. And please, visit our sister channel, Actors Reporter. When you go to Actors Reporter, you have daily news links, interviews, lots of fun red carpet stuff, but also you have a discount link. And when you click on that discount link, then you'll lead you to a discounts to all of our wonderful sponsors. There's how to interview, how to be interviewed, downloads by Sandro Minetti, fabulous information. There's John Michael Ferrari, wonderful photographer in the Hollywood area. Emotional Healing for Actors by Jamie Kalman. Business and Marketing for the Actors. There's Actors Connection out of New York and now Media out of New York. Please support our sponsors. We appreciate them and we appreciate you. Welcome back. We're here with the Horror Fund Equity, Marlon Schulman. And we were just talking about what makes Horror Fund Equity different from raising money than every other way that you would normally think about. And I want to go to one thing you mentioned that you're not a producer. And yet, you take care of people that come to you like they're your children, like you're your babies. You don't just leave them, like something like India Go Go doesn't help them. You really stay with them, you guide them. Uh, so I'm a little confused about that because even right. though you're not a producer, you're really doing producer type I'll, things, aren't you? I'll be we are, and, 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 and I'll be more specific. Okay. When, we're not uh, um, creative producers. We don't, tell, we don't tell people what needs to be in their films. We make suggestions, um, but we don't have any creative control over the, over the film itself. In fact, we do get an executive producer title. We get a salary that's built in, that's part of the raise. Um, there, are a lot, there are little fees here and there that will be explained when people come to us. Um, but we're not someone who uh, goes out and hires the crew. We don't uh, review the script and say you have to make this change or that change. Um, but we never leave the, our people alone. We're in there because we're ultimately going to be taking an equity stake in the production of some sort. And therefore, the success of the film, the profitability of the film, is forefront in our minds at all times. So we won't leave you alone, in a, in, 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 but make that in a good way. Um, we will help with casting, we will help with whatever is necessary to get that film funded and profitable and distributed. That's why we reverse engineer the script. We get the distribution first, then get it funded, and then help you. We even have ways of monetizing tax credits throughout the country. Now so, you started to mention that there's a second website that I'd like you to direct us to. What is that? Well, it's, it's not up yet except for a splash page. Okay. We're, we're building it. It's called the Federation of Horror. Well, let's and take a look at the splash page when we get a chance, guys. The okay. Federation of Horror. I love that. The Federation of Horror is, uh, will be a free community for uh, fans, professionals, people who are interested in horror, in any aspect of it. They'll be blogging. They'll be chatting. 
There'll be uh, some advertisements. We have production companies. We have casting companies that are already wanting to show their wares right. on the site. Um, the purpose of it is to gather, and we'll be aggregating other fan sites. There are thousands of horror websites uh, around the internet, and we want to aggregate them. We're trying in some small way to centralize the horror industry so that people are just not reinventing the wheel each time. Right. They know they can go there for sources. So let me ask you, why horror? You have been involved in all sorts of different films for years successfully of all sorts of genres. Why did you choose to target in on horror? Well, I'll, I'll answer this in a in sort of an inverse fashion. Um, horror has one of the greatest ROIs, return on investment, there is in the industry. Um, for relatively low money that some horror movies are shot for, and other projects as well, uh, the return can be incredible. We've heard the stories of the $20,000 film that brings in $50 million. Uh, quite frankly, Jason Bloom's built a career in part on r somewhat lower budget films um, being uh, blown up in a really big way. Um, we think that there's a real opportunity in horror for new directors, new actors, new screenwriters. Um, uh, th there he is. Who is that? Uh, um, that's, I believe, Jason. No, I believe so. Yeah, that's yeah him. very nice. Um, and uh, uh, his films started low. Uh, there's the stories of paranormal that were right, right. Uh, obtained, and uh, right. we actually have some relationships with some of those people that we're building at this nice. time. Uh, you can find real jewels in the world of horror. And it's a global phenomenon. It seems to ride out good times and bad times economically. Um, you can, we have a film, Starleaf, that we successfully uh, are, are presenting, which is on our website. And we have get a poster to, for that. We have a poster for it. And, and if you go to the website, you can see the trailer. And um, I, I, I'm not going to reveal the budget, but to say that it's a micro budget is uh, is accurate. Oh, I see. It's and it looks fantastic. It's a great it's a great little movie. Mm -hmm. It'll be out in the spring, and uh, and we're gonna, we're, we're, we're starting to look at right now at uh, a little bit of the trailer. We won't have audio because we don't want to give it all away. Right. We have a distributor. There's us. There's a sleeping former soldier. Right. right um, right. Shot up in Washington. It looks like it's shot beautifully, Marlon. It's a, it's, it's a beautiful. It's a beautiful high movie. High quality. High quality yep. production. And uh, I know you can't listen to it now, but the music is terrific. The dialogue. What attracted us first was. Uh, that it had a good, well-written script. Uh -huh. It all starts with that. I mean, it sounds hackneyed. It sounds, you know, it all starts with a good script. And we're looking for the next horror Shawshank, uh, Shawshank Redemption. Right, right, right. We're always looking for that. Um, and there's a market for it. There's a global market for uh, horror films. We want to make it a global market for good horror so films. So let me ask you this question, a simple I know. What makes a film a horror film? Uh, how you say a script? Yeah, well, that doesn't have enough killing it. That doesn't have enough. What what has to be? There, there are many subgenres of horror. Uh huh. There's slasher films. There's uh, scary films. There's ghost films. There's uh, a, 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 the occult. Um, it needs to scare the audience. It needs I to see. engender uh, uh, almost a visceral reaction to the in the in the audience. Uh, generally, there's some blood. Generally, there's some killing. It uh, doesn't have to be, though. Right, right, um, right. Uh, Alfred Hitchcock did horror films. Right, never he, saw anybody but, die. But, but, you never, but you never, you don't really think of him as a horror director. No. You think of him as a thriller. Yeah, and in fact, right. many people are calling horror elevated thrillers these right. days. Right, boy, I'll tell you, ha Alfred Hitchcock, there he is on our screen. What an uh, inspiration Ro to me, too. I Ro just Ro Rosemary's Baby, horror film. Yes. Uh, uh, th there's Which was really scary. <laughs> I still can't watch parts of that film. So let me ask you a question. You're going to be soliciting scripts pretty soon, mm -hmm. and people go to horrorequityfund.com, horrorequityfund.com, and, and keep your, your, your eyes on that. What are you looking for? There's Rosemary's Baby. <laughs> I love that. We're, what we're, are you looking for? We're looking for something that has uh, something that's perhaps a little out of the box, uh, 
Mm -hmm. um, something that hasn't been done before, or if it has been done, it has a slightly different take on it. We're looking for good writing, clear characters, um, a story arc. We're looking for potential. Right. Um, and we're looking for something that we believe either has some sort of interesting marketing hook, something that will be profitable because we're very filmmaker centric. We're very actor centric. A lot of our a lot of our films come from actors who have decided to write their own part in a, in, in a movie. Fascinating. I have more questions, but we have chatter questions. I want to thank all of our chatters internationally. We really appreciate you. Monday through Friday here on Actors Eat Chat. Uh, Jordan, we have a chatter question. Yes, yeah, from Washington. They want to know, why did you choose horror over something like sci-fi or fantasy? Uh, thank you for the question, first of all. Um, Horror, as I said before, can be done very inexpensively at times. And so the potential return on investment can be, if it's well done, extremely high. Sci-fi, although a terrific genre and one that I dearly love, generally has more CGI in it, generally has more special effects. So it's more expensive. Uh, more expensive to start with. And sci-fi ebbs and flows as far as uh, profitability on a global basis. Horror, uh, 15 out of the top 20 ROI films um, are horror films. Return uh, on investment? Return on investment. Okay. And, and that's getting your money back, people. And, and, and making money, people. And that's on both sides. It's uh. the filmmaker making their money, it's the investors in the film making money, and this is a business. Right. Sure, we want to show our movies, right. but it's a business. So let's talk a little bit about the investor. There are large investors and there are small investors. One of the advantages of Indiegogo and Kickstarter is the smaller investors can put in, uh, you know, five, six, seven hundred dollars or mm -hmm. something. Uh, uh, in your world, do you uh, have certain minimums for each project? How does that work? Well, it's not, it's not us. It's, it's, uh, yes, there are, and there is a radical difference for now okay. between what kind of investors. When we launch, as we launch, yes. we're going to be only going after uh, accredited investors. And that's defined under the, in, under the SEC rules. I'm not going to go into it. But, uh, for instance, I couldn't invest uh, in, in one of our own films because uh, I don't make enough money, because my net worth is not enough, etc. Um, so it'll be business as usual except for general solicitation, which is huge. Uh, we can solicit the world for money for, uh, for these films, but they have to be screened and it's all going to be done automatically through drop-down menus and you can read about it on the website. However, Jobs Act 2.0 is, is working its way through Congress and uh, I have it on very good authority that uh, it will be expanded from what has not yet been put into effect by the SEC and non-accredited investors, people like myself, people who have $500, $200, whatever the number is, will in fact be allowed to uh, invest in, in horror projects and after all, there are a lot of horror fans who stereotypically live in their, you know, parents' basement, or they only have 500 bucks, or they only have 200 bucks. That, those tens of millions of people will be allowed to invest. And uh, although there's no strict timetable, um, people are thinking that it'll be in 2015, first half. Interesting. I'd like to go back to that film. Uh, what was it called? Leaf? Star, Star Leaf. Star Leaf. A beautiful poster, by the way. So, is it uh, made already? Is it finished? It's in post production. I see. It's a sci fi horror film, and as I'd like to say, with a secret ingredient. Uh huh. I don't know if you saw the, uh, the but if you go to the website, go back, you'll see what the secret ingredient is. Yeah, I see. It wasn't was a rose bush. It was not a rose bush. Yes. And then, so you're going to finish it, and then you. You have already know where it's going to go. Your distribution. Leo Mark, L Leo Mark is the distributor on the film, and uh, they and we are consultants. Uh, HEF is uh, right. consultant on the film. We are already working on uh, rather involved marketing plans, release plans. Um, and you get and involved and help with all of that. In this particular case, yes, we were hired on. Uh, in addition to whatever we did to help Raising fund the film right. um, and to pre and to to help position it, we've been held, uh, held back, held on as uh, um, uh, a consultant and marketing consultant. So when you talk, oh, there's Leo Mark Studios. 
that's a w- interesting. Eric, Eric, er, Eric, uh, scroll down Mark, just very a little nice bit. Guy and scroll his, down. There his you wife go. And Maria, very there lovely they people. Are. And great group of people over there. So you're really attaching pros, 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 professionals yeah. mm-hmm. all the way. And then are you distributing? Foreign and domestic, or foreign first, or domestic. How does that work? I, I don't want to get too much into Leo Mark's oh. area, ah, but, but it will. Nice. But it will be released, I believe, mm-hmm. world. Well, I know it's going worldwide. Right. I don't know the exact order and exactly how right. it's going yet. When we come back uh, from commercial, we're not going to go just yet. We're going to talk to Brian, who is the chief creative. <laughs> chief creative. I love that. I love that. But let me ask you, please. And thank you so much, Marlon, for oh, coming my on pleasure. the side. I my appreciate pleasure. it a lot. Um, let me ask you, so where do you see next for a horror equity film? Fun. Fun. Uh, it's, it's actually, uh, it's, I'm really glad you asked the question. Um, what's happening with Horror Equity Fund is that we're going to launch and we're going to start presenting even more films than we are now. Uh, what happens as we build our films is, that, and as I mentioned earlier, we will be building a portfolio of small slices of equity in numerous films. As we do that, and as the various films make money, we'll be in a position to ourselves top off films, invest in that film. They need 200, they need 50, they need 100,000. So we'll be in a position that we can actually, as a true fund, actually fund films in part or in whole. Thereafter, we open up that portfolio that I'm talking about to outside investors so that in effect we become sort of a hedge fund for films right, right. and that's the end game we want to become that large we want to centralize the industry to that extent well if anyone can do it you've done it for other companies uh, n- on numerous occasions uh, so now you're you're doing it for your own and i'm really pleased and don't forget it's horrorequityfund.com HorrorEquityFund.com. There it is on your screen, and we can take a look at it. And also, I'd like to remind you that Horror Equity Fund is on Facebook and on Twitter, and we're going to be looking at them real shortly, I'm sure, here. Thank you so much. So this is their, your, their Facebook, and then they're also on Twitter. And Marlon, you, if you want to connect with him, he is also. There, there's his page. Oh, that's on, my, that's my, uh, he's an I, attorney. I, I'm an attorney in also. In his pastime, <laughs> a very well-known, respected attorney. And then there's his, without a picture, but that's okay. That's his Facebook, and he's also on Twitter. Go ahead and connect with him. Marlon, it's been wonderful speaking with you, and uh, my, I'm looking forward pleasure. to chatting with the chief creative. I, I will say gonna... also that we, you can reach us by telephone at 844 4 Is that 844 844- The number four, horror? H-O-R-R-O-R, and you can get me, Brian, and some other people in our group. Well, that's a very cool phone number for you to get. (laughs) We aim to please. I guess. You're watching Actors Eat Chat. I'm your host, Pepper J. We'll be right back after a word from one of our sponsors. The great thing about N Now Media is it's a one-stop shop. We are soup to nuts. We have writers, directors, producers, animators, motion graphics artists, editors, videographers, musicians, all under one roof. And we are a boutique creative house where we actually do the creative at much more affordable price and have the staff in-house to execute it professionally. My name is John Palacio. My name is Luis Montez. My name is Paul Robinson. I am Jesse Cervantes. I'm Curtis Peel. My name is Ben Joran. One of the most common questions we have from potential clients is how does it work? What happens when you engage in now media to create a video, a marketing campaign? It first starts with, you know, obviously having the phone conversation with the client, brainstorm with them to come up with a really good concept and a really good idea to push whatever they're trying to do to the next level. Only with that in mind can we really try to tailor a concept and a script for their exact audience that fits in with their branding and the message they want to tell. We'll storyboard it out, get a real rough idea uh, of what we want to do. We'll then present the client with a couple of options, different ways that we could go with some of the things that we've come up with. And they'll say this is good and then we'll come back and we'll start animating that or designing it or editing it. Our clients are generally, you know, like to be really hands-on and we'd like to hear from you kind of all along the board. There's no surprises. 
What we like to do with every partner is we actually create a page on the EndNow website. So they can give feedback and that way when the time we get to the final product, you know, usually there's not a whole lot more revisions to do because they, we've already been working together the whole time. The big difference is that, that real personal creative touch. We have a creative group that can execute that vision, whether it's animation, video, motion, graphics, and do so with some unique creative that is custom tailored to that business. You know, dream it up. It's video. It's magic. It can happen. Hi, welcome back to Actor Z Chat. I'm your host, Pepper J. That was And Now Media, an amazing production company out of New York. They have clients. They take them tall, short, big, and large. Please support our sponsors. And now we're back to Actor Z Chat. And today I'm going to introduce you to the Chief Creative Officer of Horror Equity Fund. He is, he's worn a lot of hats, <laughs> a lot of hats. He's a producer, a screenwriter, a director, a world-class, world-winning judo guy, and he just about does it all, even windows. Please yeah, welcome windows. an actor, yes, and please welcome my friend Brian Hershkowitz. Hey! hey. 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 Nicely done. Did I do that? You, that you well. wear so many hats, you do so many things <laughs> that I didn't want to forget anything. I didn't want to. So... I'm on the, you know, later middle age side, and I've never heard yet uh, chief creative. You're a chief creative. You're a CCO, a, chief I creative CCO, officer. CCO, yeah. Yes, you made that up. We did, yeah. <laughs> I yeah. I actually, I wanted to be Renfield to his Dracula, right? and that didn't quite work, so we, we decided on chief creative officer. I love it. I love it. Yeah. And, um, you know, you've done so many things in your life. Why did you decide to team up with Marlon? to well, uh, do Hef. Honestly, one of the most, uh, I've been independently producing for the last six or seven years. Uh, I've done four films in the last three years. That's right. Um, and by far, the most difficult part of the industry is to raise funds. And when you are, are a filmmaker and you're sitting at home trying to figure out how do I make my movie, where do I get the money, unless you're, you know, married well or have parents they can throw a, a couple of million bucks at right. you it's really difficult so yeah. it really requires um so much energy so much time and to have a place that you can come to that can really kind of hand and spoon feed you everything you need to get your funding for your film i i think it's a miracle for the industry and uh, focusing on horror gives us the ability to uh, take a, a fanatical fan base that is passionate about what they do and really kind of cater to those people. So that's why I got involved. I, Interesting. I wanted, yeah, I wanted and also because of Marlon, because he's yeah, so Marlon cool and, I and known, knowledgeable. And, we've known and, each other for a long time. Right, we've right. been friends and had worked uh, closely on a couple of projects that never came to fruition, but we liked each other, uh, respected each other. Right. Um, and I don't know why he, he wants me around, but I'm Well, I want you thrilled. around, so I, you know, there you go. <laughs> There you go. And so you're part of the Horror Equity Fund. Yeah. You deal more in the creative. Does that mean that you're really involved in uh, what script to choose and how maybe to make suggestions on script? What's, what's your specific role? Well, I, you know, Marla and I have a, a really uh, terrific working relationship. And one of the things that I hope to, to put together with Marlon's uh, assistance and, and guidance was the our development process. Um, what happens when a script comes in? What do we do with it? How do we vet it? What, what are the parameters for what we will accept and what we won't accept? Those are big questions because uh, as Marlon was speaking about earlier, we don't want films that are simply fundable. We right. want films that are potentially profitable because ultimately we want um, the people that come to us to invest to be lifelong investors, to have uh, the ability and the desire to come back to us and put money back into the horror equity fund, back into other films, and people that lose money in these type of uh, you know risky uh, investments right. tend to kind of go away and say, oh, "I got burned. I'm not going to come back." Because usually, the people that are asking for the, for the money are the people that want the money to make the film that want they want to benefit themselves. But it seems to me. You know, what the Horror Equity Fund does is they sort of surround the investor with not a sure thing, 
but certainly they they you say vetted you're certainly putting together a package that it's would be unlikely under these circumstances not to do well. I mean, you're really putting all of the best parts together for the investor. It would be really uh, disingenuous of me to say that, you know, we every film we're gonna do is gonna make money or how much money or, or it will all be profitable. However, the thing that we do is we take every step that we can to make sure that everything we do will be profitable, which means, first of all, vetting the script, making sure that the script is the highest quality that we can get it into, that it is in the best shape it can be in, um, that any attachments that we can help with uh, all go toward making it a more profitable film. And probably the biggest thing that the independent filmmaker, the, the actor who has a script that wants to get made because he wants to star in it, those people, one of the biggest mistakes they think they, they do is they don't think about the exit strategy. They don't think about the end game. They don't think about what happens once I make that film. How do I get my money back from my investors? How do I get people to see it? Um, you know, a film sitting in a closet may be the best film ever made. Sitting in the closet, nobody's going to see it. And so you help and bring in people to help with the marketing and the publicity and, and the distribution. You really, because usually creatives, when they're making films, that's all they do is they know how to make the film. Right. And they usually don't even know what the business end of how to uh, get it out there in business. Yeah, it's not like that. They don't think about it. You know, they think that the end game is I made a film. Right. And, and here it is, and that's great. And I, I couple of, I, I guess it was about a year ago, I, I got contacted by a filmmaker in Texas who said, you know, I, I made a, I, I put money, my own money into a movie, and I made it. And I said, oh, that's great. And what did you do with it? And he said, well, we, we haven't been able to get distribution. It's been sitting in my right. closet. Well, that was interesting because when we were speaking with Marlon, he was talking about reverse engineering. Mm -hmm. and, and really what you're doing is you're making sure that the most important parts are in place before it even you know gets funded Absolutely. you know and and you do that based on your knowledge and vetting of the script and yeah uh, all all things start with the script and uh, it's you know I, I come from a screenwriting background I was I have been a screenwriter I am a screenwriter and if a project isn't on the page it's never gonna actually you know come to fruition that, but we have a very wide range of what we consider vettable and and uh, pro potentially profitable. It's not like there's, you know, one cookie cutter, this is the only kind of film that we can do. And we also feel like um, we use horror in a very broad sense, and that uh, films that, um, you know, it can be a musical, it can be a comedy, it can be a, a, it can be a musical comedy. Right. It can be, oh, interesting. Um, as long as there's an element of horror that we can say this is something that fits into our, our purview, then it's something we would absolutely consider. Starting with the script, and then um, you know, a script that may not be absolutely the greatest in the world if it has a huge marketing hook, right. and if it has an incredible actor attached. You can attached. help fix it. Yeah, and we can also say that rises to the level of profitability. So, so. let me ask you, other than scripts, mm -hmm. what if somebody has just an idea for a film or a synopsis or an outline and hasn't made it into a script? Yeah. Would you be at all interested in having them come to you and say, you know, I, I, I'm thinking of writing this. Is this something you'd, you'd be interested in looking at, you know, after it was done? You know, that may be something down the line that we would, we would try and take on. At this point, we're looking at fully formed projects. The, the better, uh, the more packaged it is, the better for us. Um, something that has an attachment of actors, something that has maybe some money already in place, that has some sort of marketing hook. All of that improves the, the opportunities to actually get funded and make money back. Right. But that's not to say that we're not, by the way, we're not just uh, interested in film projects. And what I what mean. What does that mean? Well, that means, uh, for instance, let's say someone wanted to, to produce a haunted hayride, uh, a live performance piece. Um, that's something that we would consider. Oh, how um, fun is that? That really yeah. opens up the whole particular live performance thing yeah. or a film that's being shown and on the stage in front of it there's a live performance thing Absolutely. like Disney does at the El Capitan or we're in development I can't talk too much about it but we're in development on some reality programs that oh, have to fun. do with horror we have uh, uh, other television you do projects. a reality program based on I horror I can't talk about okay it. <laughs> but you sure made me think about it we're working yeah. on a reality show right now and it's like you never really know what's going to be in front of you which is exciting that, but, that may be it but horror is like <laughs> blood and death and eat, eat, we we eat, put eat. we put monsters in everyone's home, and then we we put a hidden camera. No, we don't. Do <laughs> I love it, but that does uh, it, be fun. We have to keep 
going to whoreequityfund.com. Yeah, check out. Keep checking And keep in. up with what you're doing. Yeah. Keep up with what you're doing. And so creative-wise, mm-hmm. uh, you've, you've been involved in so many different projects. You guys going to bring up your own script? Uh, on one of these things? Well, or? on occasion, uh, <laughs> some, of my, some of my material, if, if I can get past our very high standards of vetting, <laughs> uh, which is always a question, by the way, yeah. but if I, uh, yeah, uh, there, there are a few, in fact, uh, on our website right now, there's one project that, uh, this is just the demo site, so it's not right. a project that we're necessarily going to be moving forward. Can forward I look at their website for a moment? I know <laughs> we're going to take a quick break, but before we do, this is horrorequity.com, so I'm seeing things on here, okay? Hor- horrorequityfund.com. Hor- horrorequityfund.com. Right. It's like Hef. Now, there are three pictures Horror here. Equity Fund. So the middle one is Starleaf. Yeah. We've seen the trailer. Mm-hmm. It's beautifully shot. And there's a, if you scroll. And I, I'm looking at Whispers and Party Monsters. Mm-hmm. What are we looking at here? And then oh, Identity Theft, things. that's, uh, that's uh-huh. a film that I wrote. That's a thing that you wrote. Yeah. Oh, so you're up for contention. I am up for contention on our on our demo side. On our demo not, side. Not say, oh, um, I see yeah. how that works. Yeah. Very interesting. Well, you're watching Actressy Chat, and I'm your host, Pepper J. We'll be right back after word from one of our sponsors. Don't go away. <laughs> hey everyone, I am Judith Jones. If you are looking for photographs, which a lot of you are, let's face it, we need photographs every day, actors, models, even if you're just, you know, the milkman, you need photographs, okay? You need to look good. And if you wanna look good, you've only got one man to go to, and that's John Michael Ferrari. You see, I needed to look, I needed to look good. So I went to John and he basically took me to the most beautiful place in LA and took these wonderful photographs of me and I really didn't even recognize myself because I just looked, well, let's just face it, I looked stunning. So if you want to look stunning like myself in those photographs, uh, go to him. He will make you look beautiful. If you're pretty, he'll make you look prettier. If you're not pretty, he'll make you look pretty. John Michael Ferrari. That's all you need to know. So go to imagesbyferrari.com. That's the website, imagesbyferrari.com. And you can check out all his photography and you can contact him there. You can look at a picture of me. He directed me, because if you need direction, which, hello, I do, uh, he directs you too. So go and check that out, imagesbyferrari.com. You'll love it, you'll look great. Check it out, bye everyone. Hi, welcome back to Actor Z Chat. I'm your host, Pepper J, and I'm here with my friend and the Chief Creative Officer of Horror Equity Fund, Brian Hershkowitz. And we've known each other a number of years, oh, actually, wow. Marlon, through all cities. Yep. You know, and one thing about these gentlemen, they're so connected in Hollywood. And one of the ways they're connected is how we met, which is in a, uh, a networking community that specializes in all different things but they have a special section for entertainment and there it is right now this is the allcities.org network uh, started and founded and controlled by Eric Shaw my buddy and but the reason I bring that up thank you gentlemen is that who you know is everything in Hollywood yeah. and and we know I know Brian I know Marlon I'm I know their creativeness, I know their straightforwardness, I know their perseverance, their professionalism, I mean, they're real. And, and because, ah, and because uh, they connect to other industry people that are in the industry, that must give you a really advantage that you can suggest, well, you know, why don't you talk to this person that can bring this to the table? Absolutely. Doesn't it help? And then, you know. You know, so much of this industry is about networking and about making the connection six de- degrees of separation. Um, I've been fortunate enough to moderate the media group in all cities for the last uh, six to eight months or so. And just making those connections and being able to, not just for yourself, but to help others. Yes. To be able to say, hey, uh, I can hook you up with this type of organization or I can get you that person or I can help you with this. Right. Um, there's an enormous amount of business that comes out of that and an, right. an enormous yes. amount of good. Yes, and, and as we're taping today's episode of Actors Eat Chat, tomorrow you're actually making a presentation for we all are. cities because yeah. they have professionals come in and, and give little lectures or workshops and you ask questions yeah. and stuff. It really just uh, opens up everybody's knowledge and, and what's available. And we use and abuse and enjoy each other. What does he <laughs> say? We we make money, we, we uh, make friends and yeah, there's uh, one more. What is it? Don't know how to network. 
uh, gain new friends and make money. That's right. But I don't know if that's the order. That, that's, that's right. Or Eric Cha, I apologize for that. <laughs> so I thought some other things on your demo page. It was yeah. the demo page. One was something about Party Monsters. Yeah, Nylon Pink and Party Monsters. Nylon Pink is an Asian rock group. And they're a real, actual okay. rock group. Okay. And uh, the Miles, who is the uh, oh, writer, that's them director. There. Yep. Nylon Pink. Oh, they're mm -hmm. young. They're beautiful. Yeah, that's the group. Oh, great. And they are, they are, they are stunning. Yes, they and, are. And uh, they are... Uh, connected to this film which is about uh, a monster attacking a, a club where these girls are performing oh, how cool and is that? Uh, it's a comedy musical horror film and that's right there on your demo page I that saw is. it the lovely and so where is that in the progress has that been shot that, has that been no funded? That's, what is it, that's one of the films that we're going to be presenting on our website and oh, I uh, see. getting funding for it. I see so if somebody was an, uh, an investor that felt that they could be satisfied as a, an accredited investor they could contact you Absolutely. and be involved on that and boy in that asian market that's like huge oh, yeah. huge huge you know they think of something here like american idol uh, i helped some student of mine be on taiwan idol 100 million people saw that finale wow. that's like those are numbers it's there yeah. and so you guys are really smart to because you i think marlon mentioned earlier something they might say is well, you need a, an actor to be a Chinese because I want to sell it here. Right. You need an actor that might do this because I want to sell I mean, it's like thinking ahead several steps. Th this is a perfect beginning. example of the type of project that has an incredible marketing hook that we look at it and we say, you know, this is something that is is going to be potentially highly profitable. Yay. And, of course, again, we have to say potentially. Right, because right. Because you can't predict. Because but that's always true, because you get the very best, you know, people that have even TV series on every year that are producers. People don't realize they've pitched six, right. seven, eight, nine, ten <laughs> pilots, and only maybe one or two have been picked up. So even, you know, even yeah. the best of the best. That's Absolutely. interesting. And, and there's another one on there, that demo page. Yeah. Tell us uh, something whispers. else. What's that? What's that? Uh, Whispers is another film that we're uh, looking at developing. Okay. Um, it's still uh, vetting. Uh, yep, still vetting. And, I see. Uh, not not so vetting, but uh, it's still in in the development process. So, I see. Um, we have uh, the filmmakers are uh, on board. They're supporting us. We're supporting them. Uh -huh. uh, and it's a uh, that one is a, is again has a terrific uh, you know marketing hook. Has a terrific. Um, just a great feel to it. The filmmaker had it put together a terrific uh, um, trailer for it. Um, I don't think you can get to it. It's on our oh, website, and if you register on the website, we will. Um, well, let's you go can through then, the websites real yeah. quick and remind everybody where we are. This is Horror Equity Fund. Dot com. Did I say right. it right? Hef. That is right. H-E-F. Oh, you know what I'd like to do, guys? I really like this. It may take a moment. Would you go over to my Facebook page? And I have the brand new animated Hef. Ooh, here it is. Play this. This is so cool, guys. <laughs> I love this with the eyes. <clears throat> Try this out. Look at these red eyes that are coming. Where they are. Oh, ooh. <laughs> Isn't that nice? I thought that was a nice little thing. Okay, so we have Hef. We have HorrorEquityFund.com. Let's go back to that. There we go. Okay, and then there's Marlon, uh -huh. and then we have Horror Equity Fund. And Horror Equity Fund has its own Facebook, and yep. there it is. So please go and visit. There it is, Horror Equity Fund, LLC. And they have their own Twitter, which is, their handle is at Horror Equity. And so go there and like, follow and like and be a part of it. There's my tweet about them and their retweet. And then we have Marlon's pages. We want to see again real quickly. And this is his page right there and his Facebook and his Twitter. And then Brian, we have your pages also. Yep. There's your page, brianhershkowitz.com. And look at all those things he does. And you still teach too, don't I you? I do. Mm -hmm. wow, Boston what, University. And you're an author. What's the name of that book? I looked at that <laughs> book and, and I love it. I'm going to buy it. It's called Processed, what is it? Process to Product. Process to Product. Uh, and anybody mm -hmm. that's interested in screenwriting should really check that out. I, I really have got to get a handle on that and take a look. And here you are on it's my Facebook. Facebook. Mm -hmm. There you are. And then you're also, I said your friend request, you have to say yes. And you're also There's on Twitter. Twitter and mm -hmm. you also have an IMDb page. I don't know if we have it. Have it. There you there go. I am. There you are on IMDb. And also visit me. I'm at pepperj.com. 
Pepper, oh, that's me on IMDb. Oh, I don't know what that is. <laughs> there it is, PepperJ.com. I'm screaming into the phone because I love being an actress in my spare time. Very good. And then you can also find me on my Twitter page. I have not been really good at doing things on that, but I'd like <laughs> you to join me. And then my Facebook page mm -hmm. and IMDb. And thank you for joining us. And now I would like very much for you to learn where you can find out more about the Actressy Chat Show. So take a look at this. Hi, I'm Alexis Nichols, one of your Actors Entertainment hosts. Here's a big hug and thank you for joining us on Actors Eat Chat. We are now almost 6 million viewers and chatter strong from all over the world and we really appreciate you. Actors Eat Chat shoots live Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. Pacific time from the Pepper J Production Studio below the Hollywood sign in Hollywood, California. Want to see all of today's episode or any other of our other episodes? please visit ActorsEntertainment.com and put the talent's name in the search box. And go ahead and visit Actors Entertainment on IMDb.com. That's the Internet Movie Database to see more than 1,200 entertainment industry professionals who have been guests on Actors E Chat. And social media is so important, so follow Actors Entertainment on Twitter. Our handle is at Actors Entertain. And join us on Facebook at Actors Entertainment Fan Page. And don't forget to like us. Those likes really help out. Stay tuned for our Actors Reporter Animation, which won Best Animation at the Telly Awards. Great job in Now Media and Pepper J Productions, and terrific singing by Melissa Suzanne. And now, a special thank you to today's guest. Thank you so much, Alexis, and welcome back to Actors Eat Chat. And, and I want to thank both of you, Brian, Marlon, for being thank on you. and sharing Our with pleasure. us. pleasure. I mean, what an interesting insight into the entertainment business. Two professionals that have really done so much so successfully have come together to do this Horror Equity Fund. And I really want to thank you for being on the show. And I want to thank you, all of our Actors Eat Chat viewers. We appreciate you Monday through Friday here on Actors Eat Chat. And until then, next time, take care. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. What's that? Actors Eat Chat Show? Happens to be my favorite in the morning. I want nothing but a cup of coffee, a bottle of Kahlua, six naked girl. Wait, no, that's not right. Actors Eat Chat Show. Thanks for joining us on Actors Eat Chat. Remember to visit ActorsE.com and enjoy all your past Actors E-Chat episodes with celebrity favorites. Look in the search box to find who you're looking for. Actors E has had over 1,300 entertainment celebrity guests and over 6 million viewers worldwide. Join us every Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific Time. Thank you for watching Actors E-Chat, live from Hollywood. Actors E-Chat is a co-production of Pepper J Productions and Live Video Inc., a Kurt Kelly company. All rights expressly reserved in all formats. Thanks for watching. Oh my gosh, hey big Hollywood starlet that just happens to be walking by. Yes? I'm not from around here, but I want to be an actress just like you. What do I need to know? <gasps> Kid, let me tell you, whether you're a seasoned pro or a naive newbie like you, there's one thing you need to know. To get my first job, I lived in a slum, beat out 50 other girls to play a drunk bum. I cried. My first agent charged me 30%, Thanks. working three jobs and I couldn't pay rent, but I'm an actor. She's an actor. A shark could nod my leg on a B film in Sydney. To pay for the stitches, I sold my left kidney. I finally made a union. Their rules were complex. Their piles of paperwork fogged up my specs. But I'm an actor. She's an actor. I'm an actor. Well, that's rather disturbing. But what's the one thing I need to know? Don't listen to the critics, don't follow all the tabs Forget that sleazy photog and the agent that's got cramps Go to Actors Reporter Actors Reporter Actors Reporter.com Learn the truth
tricks and the secrets without all the sweat. An info packed one stop shop, it's free and on the net. Actors Reporter. Actors Reporter. Actors Reporter. Actors Reporter.com. Hey, how can they help her? Career cues, union news, makeup woes, advice from pros, insurance tips, choosing scripts, everything at your fingertips. Actors Reporter. Actors Reporter. Actors Reporter. Dad, call. I just got a call back. I'm Mary Jo Gruber. Thanks for joining us on Actor Z Live Chat Show. I'm just one of your Actor Z hosts, but as you can see, I'm also the Actor Z Live video editor, which means that I'm here even when you don't see me. Actor Z is here to chat with you Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, or Hollywood Time, as I like to call it. Our guests include actors, directors, producers, writers, singers, comics, and others that are all in the entertainment industry. You can see previous shows at www.actorsentertainment.com and be sure to check out our guest index to find your favorite celebrities. See you next time. I'm working. <laughs>